Four, one, two. Right, so it's all right. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, for another edition of Beer Addiction with your host, Mike. Today, we're doing a tasting of my orange coriander white. It's been in the bottle for about two weeks now. I think it's been a little less, but that shouldn't matter. I mean, it should now have a resemblance of the, the, the flavor it should hold. It's, um, it comes in at about 5.5%, so it doesn't need to really age. Uh, I'm sure it'll just it'll get better within the first month or two, and then after that, uh, even possibly start declining. But I've, I've had a lot of really good luck aging my beers, um, ones that even don't necessarily have an alcohol percentage or a... Um, um, uh, a hoppiness or a maltiness that <clears throat> generally are associated to get kind of wiser and um, better with age. This one, you know, it's a light beer. It's it's a wit, so it should be should be pretty good now. Should be representable. First, this is my Mondial de la Bière T-shirt that I got for volunteering for the past two days. Oh, that was a great time. Uh, I suggest anyone who doesn't do it to do it, and I'll be back next year, hopefully for all of the five days. And despite my amazing enthusiasm right now, I'm actually exhausted because I ran the Spartan race yesterday up in Mont-Tremblant, and that took a lot out of me. My legs are finished, that's why I'm sitting. I don't plan on moving except when I pour the beer. Anyways, let's get this show on the road. I got my nice bottle here from the SAQ, which was actually a Hefe Wise. Um, so we're gonna pour it. Let's give it a crack open, since I always wanted to do this on camera. Woo! Got a little bit of smoke coming out there. Awesome, let's pour this. Wow, that's got a really nice, creamy looking head. Oh, it really, really smells like a wit. It's nice. The head looks exactly like I wanted it to be. We'll see how long it takes to dissipate. But this beer was brewed with oats, which are associated with giving it a, a creamier head than your usual uh, ale or lager. Uh, which is a perfect example is the double oatmeal stout, which is synonymous with good he creamy head retention. Anyways, on with the show. Let's start tasting this bad boy. Okay, well, as you can see, um, it's got a little bit of lacing around the glass. Um, the head retention actually went down a lot faster than I thought it would. I could have to do with the age of the beer, but I, I doubt it. It was maybe just um, not enough oats or it has to do with the malt, maybe maybe something to do with the cleanliness of my equipment. Like I said, this is orange coriander, so the color is very representative of what I wanted. It's a beautiful orange color, exactly what you'd expect in any white or wit or Hefe Wisen beer. Um, let's get for a little, little smell. Okay, so the orange, the orange really comes through in the smell. You smell the orange very strongly. You also smell what I don't want to describe as yeast, but more of a bready, um, flowery smell. It, I, it is the yeast. Um, it's the yeast strain. This was a White Labs, um, I forget the number, but the Belgian Wit strain, which is supposed to give you some nice fruity esters, which in any indication of of the yeast itself definitely worked. Yeah, but the, but yeast does come through in the smell too, which um, would normally, you know, maybe be unpleasant, but because of the style, it's exactly what I was aiming for. It's definitely opaque. It's um, it's not clear to any light that it hold up against. Um, you can 
really not see through it at all, which again is part of the style. Some are more clear than others and some are a lot more um, cloudier even orange than this, but this is exactly the color that I was aiming for. There's a little bit of spiciness to the smell too, probably coming from the coriander, but could very well also come from the yeast strain. Let's go in for a taste. Hmm. Huh. So I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of the orange. What I'm really getting is that flowery kind of oh, it's the I guess it's the oats that I added to this brew. Uh, that was part of an, one of the ingredients in the recipe that really wasn't called for, but I decided to uh, to add it in because. I saw it um, in a couple of other recipes and I kind of, I like to mix and match. But besides that, the coriander is really in, only in the finish. It comes with a nice kind of light, spicy note, light, light um, really, it tastes, it tastes spicy. There's no other way to describe it. But there's definitely a yeast taste there, which again is representative of the style. The orange comes through at the beginning. It's not in the finish at all. The finish is really just that kind of yeast, yeasty spiciness. Um, I have to admit that this beer is ideal for summer. This might not be something that I'd enjoy as much when the weather gets colder. Um, in fact, it might have actually be affecting my judgment now since my basement is freezing cold. When I say freezing, I mean it's about 10 degrees Celsius right now, um, which is cold compared to the weather outside, which is almost 30. Um, my air conditioning gets really cool down here, but it's perfect because I have a Salvesa brewing in the other room and this is the perfect lagering temperature for it. Well, could be around five, five degrees Celsius instead of 10, but 10 should hold off most of the fruity esters. But I have a feeling that even though I use the lager yeast, fermenting it at the beginning closer to the ale range might cause those fruity esters. Anyways, back to this. Let's go in for a mouthfeel and see if we, we can define it a little bit more. Yeah, the coriander, coriander definitely comes through before the finish. You really, really get that bready mouthfeel. It really, it's as if I just ate a nice piece of oat, oaty bread, if, if that's a good way to describe it. Also, like flaked oats. It really is like that, kind of like that, that top foamy layer on oatmeal that when you eat it, that's, that's what really this reminds me of. The, the smell of the fruits really, really comes through, but in the taste, it's kind of as if you're licking an orange and that's, that's the limited amount of fruitiness you get in the throat and on the palate. But it's, it's perfect. It's, it's, I'd say it's exactly what I wanted, but that's not completely true. It could have done with a little yet less of the bready, yeasty taste. Um, that could have probably been done by me not adding the oats and maybe adding um, some flaked wheat uh, instead, which would probably give you a little less of that, um, well, has body right now because of that, that uh, breadiness. And it could have been a little more clean, which is something that I'm gonna work on for next time. But I definitely wanna reuse that yeast strain because it turned out great. So that's it. Cheers. Next week, uh, we'll be reviewing either a specialty brew or my funky downtown brown, which is what I'm calling my brown ale that will be revealed shortly. So cheers and have a great night. Mike with Beer Addiction. Ciao.